uh, Jim said it is uh, 3 3. So let's get started. Thank you so much for attending today. Um, I will introduce myself first. I'm um, Dr. Rima Arana. I uh, am the Director of Strategic Initiatives mm -hmm. at um, Toro University, also the Director of our Faculty Development Center, which is the Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning. It gives me great pleasure to have you at uh, this event, which is brought to you by two of um, well, Toro University uh, system has two faculty development centers. One is um, the center I just mentioned. And then the other center is on in the Western division, uh, combining for Nevada and California. And um, that center, uh, Dr. Jim O'Connor, my colleague and counterpart will uh, speak off in a few minutes. Um, in in a now or during the chat at some point, I will put both the links of the centers on in the chat feature, and I will put Jim and my email address in the chat. We have lots of things that happen in terms of faculty development, and it is open to all campuses. All our events are open to all campuses, New York. Uh, Montana, California, Chicago, um, Nevada, Tory University worldwide. I know Israel is in a different time zone, but we do hope you can take part uh, in the other non-live events that we offer time to time. A few housekeeping things for today is that um, this is recorded. So we will give you a link at the end. If you have a colleague who could not attend and wants a link later, again, there is a recording available. Secondly, if you have a question or, or a comment about the presentation today, you see a tab here, Q&A. Kindly put your question and um, Michael will get to it uh, either during his session or at the Q&A portion. Um, anything, any other housekeeping? If I remember, I'll put it in the chat feature. Today we have Dr. Michael Barber. Thank you so much to Michael for being with us today. Uh, Jim will introduce him in a second. Our presentation today is about micro-credentials, badges, um, and it is so important at a time like today in higher education, where there is so much of emphasis on lifelong learning, on professional development, on a continuing education, faculty development and certification. So what, what, is, what are micro-credentials? Why is this important? And how can faculty be involved, not just from the lens of faculty development, but also for student success? So that is what Michael will be talking about. But before that, let me take a second to introduce my colleague, uh, Dr. Jim O'Connor. He is professor and founder, de founding Dean Emeritus of the College of Education and Health Sciences at Toro University, California. He's also director of the Western Division Center, which is the Center for Innovative Learning and Teaching. Um, Jim, the floor is yours. Thank you, Rima, and welcome everybody. I wanna, in particular, welcome our new colleagues from Montana. Uh, it is an honor for me to uh, introduce Dr. Michael Barber. He is a professor of education, an instructional designer. He's one of those faculty members who does it all, teaching, service, research. He's a center fellow for the Center for Innovative Learning and Teaching. Um, I'm sure that he has published more than any other uh, faculty member in the College of Education and Health Sciences. He recently received a Turo-wide award for his outstanding scholarship. Uh, he has worked on badges and micro-credentials with uh, Provost Schweitzer and Salkin over the last year and a half uh, for the Turo system. So uh, welcome, Mike. Look forward to your presentation. All right. Thank you very much, Jim. So I'm just going to share my screen here. And I want to make sure my chat is still available so I can drop a few links in as we are going. 
Um, so as Jim mentioned, um, I'm, I, I guess the title that they've, uh, they're using right now is coordinator of the micro-credentials at Toro initiative. And you'll see an email address there with, built into the initiative name, which is actually active right now. So if you uh, have questions or, or things, you can uh, send it along to that address. So um, I've broken the, the presentation up today in sort of uh, three different parts. And I'll pause after each part to see if there's some questions. And um, for some folks in the audience who may have a little more familiarity with badges uh, and how to, to do that within our existing system, uh, the first part or two may be a little bit old hat for you. Um, and it may be the third aspect that you're here for. Uh, but for some folks in the audience, I know you're coming to this brand new. So uh, one of the things that I, I wanted to start with was basically looking at uh, badges in general and, and sort of what they are. And, and uh, many of us, I think, and, and you can actually um, use the reaction feature. So down at the bottom, um, you will probably see that uh, there is an option to click on your reactions and you can hit the thumbs up if you would like. Um, but um, for folks, there are approximately 1,500 people in our system that have earned one of these three badges. And uh, in case there's no one from online ed in the room, uh, from what I understand, the platinum level badge, the fourth level badge, uh, will be coming in, I think, sometime next month or early November. Uh, they're getting ready to launch, so there'd be a fourth one you could earn. Uh, but for folks that have earned one of these badges, if you wanted to uh, give us a thumbs up, either in the chat or through the reaction features, we can get a, a sense. Because many of you, like I say, have already um, earned a badge at some point and uh, probably didn't even recognize sort of the what it was that uh, we were looking at. Now, for uh, folks in the audience that may be wondering the differences between badges and micro-credentials and that kind of thing, um, and some people may feel a little bit embarrassed about the fact that they don't quite understand these differences, uh, I, I'm here to tell you, first of all, don't worry about that because in all honesty, even the field doesn't uh, understand that. So um, the Commonwealth of Learning, which is a Canada-based organization uh, that works with the 37 countries that are or have been part of the, the Commonwealth, um, released a report two years ago. Uh, and one of their findings in the report was depending upon where you were located in the world, in some cases, just even which institution you were at, uh, the term micro-credential and even the term digital badges had different meanings and didn't have a sort of single framework that it could uh, uh, fall under. So because of that, uh, because of this lack of agreed sort of terminology around it, it really made it difficult for folks to understand. Um, so, you know, what's really the difference between a, a, a formal badge and just some random thing that you might find on the internet, a random image that you might find on the internet? Well, the main thing is the ability to verify it. So in much the same way that if you think about the degrees that you might have on your, actually it's over this side, over on your wall, you can see my wife's degrees over there. Um, you know, if you think about the way in which those are presented, they have a seal on it. They, they have a certain type of paper to it. In many cases, kind of like, you know, our checks and stuff like that. If you hold it up to the light, you can see a watermark in it and those kinds of things. You know, those are things that we do to try to, you know, present the um, distinguishability of it, if you will, or the credibility of it, the verifiability of it. Well, badges are the, the same kind of thing. And, and one of the nice things is, is that there's a digital function for that. So um, when you have a badge, it should always link back to a page, something like this one. Uh, this particular one comes from our own system, which is based in Badger. Uh, there are about a dozen different badge systems that are out there, but you'll always see this little green check mark that says verified. And if you have a badge yourself, like this demonstration badge here, you can always re-verify that badge at any point in time. Now, the verification actually comes in down here in the bottom where there's this um, 
what they call JSON in it. And if you were to actually click on that, it gives you all of this coding, which is not anything that you need to be worried about other than the fact that one of the ways that as a professional that you can verify whether or not someone has a, uh, a badge that is an authentic badge is to see if it actually has that, that information, that, that JSON aspect of it. Um, so once you've got a badge that's sort of an official badge, and, and one of the things that you can do with it is to share that badge. Um, so um, there is just a single link that you can provide that would give you essentially the information to go back to this kind of page. Uh, but you can also share it on a variety of social media platforms. So you can see here LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and that's actually Canvas Portfolio is that last one there in case you're not familiar with that particular icon. Um, it's one of their newer products that they've got created. Um, so if you've been awarded, say, one of... Um, you know, these four badges at some point, these are, if you were to go to that particular badge page, so essentially the version of that that you received, one of the options that you would have up in the, um, usually it appears in the top right hand corner, is the ability to share that badge to all of those things. So if you've been awarded those badges, and I saw a lot of the thumbs up coming through both the chat and um, on the participants list. So I know that about two thirds of you in here already have at least one of those badges. You can actually share that to your various profiles. Um, if you're not familiar with how to do it, uh, we do have, or we have created a number of links uh, of little instructional videos. You can see here now, uh, most of them are in the two to four minute range. Uh, there's the URL for you in the chat if you want it to go there um, and figure out, you know, which of those areas you might want to share your badge to. And while the examples are all using a Toro California badge, um, they are useful for any badge that you might have received. So those Office of Online Ed ones, if you've gotten any of the badges from the How to Use Canvas course that the instructional technology folks in New York have put together, all of those can be shared as well. Um, now, for our particular purposes, since this is sort of the beginning and looking at, you know, what is a badge, um, from the official micro-credentials at Toro initiative, um, we are defining a badge as essentially something that is a representation of a set of competencies or achievements. Um, so if you think about the scouts or the, the guides that have, you know, those merit badges that come across a sash, um, it's sort of a digital version of that, except for it represents some form of unit of learning. Uh, whereas a micro-credential essentially is a sequence of those badges that are stacked together in a pathway. And once you have earned one or two or three or four of these together, that it ends up being a sequence of a larger thing. So as an example, if you think about the uh, online ed ones that we've received, you could have it set up so that once you complete all four levels, you get a micro-credential in something. Um, so that would be sort of the way in which we've operationalized those aspects of it. Uh, so I'm going to pause here for a second, and I notice there's a question in the Q&A um, that we've, uh, you know, I'm going to yeah. pause at this point. Yeah, and the question uh, also I'd encourage folks to drop them in the chat as well. Do you want to address the question now, Mike? Yes. So I've got, uh, I want to look at, um, so if you've been awarded one of those badges, um, you should have received an email that said that you were awarded that badge, and that would take you to the direct link to that badge. Uh, additionally, if you are in the course where you were awarded the badge, so in the case of, say, one of these four badges here, if you were to go into that course again and where it says um, claim your badge, if you click there, it will also provide you where the badge is and you can share it from there or you can click on the link there and it will take you directly into Badger. And uh, when we get to the end, if I've got a minute, I can actually walk you through that process since uh, so many of you have these particular badges uh, here. Uh, so I'll 
answer that live done and perfect so um moving on so again looking at one of the things that you can do with these from an instructional standpoint um, the easiest and sort of entry level way into using badges within your teaching is gamification or to gamify your course and actually these badges here are a good example of that um, you know, the fact that they've divided up this course into these four levels, uh, three right now, the fourth one is coming, uh, that they've sort of sequenced the material uh, where you have sort of the easier stuff first and then sort of the moderately more difficult stuff and then a little bit more difficult. And they've attached, you know, even levels that we recognize, um, you know, if you think about gold, silver, bronze, um, it has these connotations that go along with it that we all sort of have a schema for uh, in terms of, of what they would mean to us. Um, and I think when they originally set it up, they were sort of just thinking three levels because uh, the platinum doesn't sort of fit in with that uh, kind of schema. But for many of us, once we got the bronze one, uh, it, there, there was some incentive to actually go and get the silver one because we wanted to kind of level up, if you will. You know, we wanted to get that higher level of achievement. And, and that's really the, the nature of gamification. And when you look at the way in which a lot of our courses are already set up, um, you know, education in general is, is inherently um, game like, you know, you've got all of these aspects within your courses where students are trying to uh, complete specific activities. Many cases it's for grades, although what we're finding more and more now, a lot of our programs are moving more to, uh, you know, a pass fail kind of model where things are either done or not done. So um, the fact that, you know, you have a badge based way as opposed to a grade book kind of way um, is, you know, one of the inherent aspects of, of gamification. Some of the other reasons why you might want to do it, um, you know, just the, the aspect that I mentioned earlier about the fact that you've got the bronze, now let's go for the silver kind of thing, you know, it provides that level of an engagement and, and motivation uh, that we all have, um, you know, it's, 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 it's fascinating to watch, uh, you know, adults when it comes to, to games because, you know, we all become kids when you, you add some element of challenge to an aspect of, of learning or really of, of any aspect. I mean, just if we were having a, a retreat and creating a social kind of environment to get to know each other, if we brought in a bunch of board games, you'd see how quickly that competitive aspect that, you know, the, the competitive nature that we all have embedded within us. Uh, comes out and and depending on the nature of the game, whether or not we become more collaborative uh, as a way to, you know, uh, win in that aspect. Um, so all of this is actually currently built into your Canvas environment. So if you wanted to, you could go in and gamify your courses today. So as an example, when you log into Canvas, you would want to look over here on the left-hand menu in Canvas to see if there is a badges option there. And if there's not a badges option over in that left-hand area, you want to click on your course settings and then go to the navigation tab. That will bring up a menu that looks something like this. If you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that Badges, page disabled, won't appear in navigation is probably down in the bottom somewhere. You want to take that and drag it up so that it's up to the top so that it just says badges. Uh, scroll back down to the bottom and click on save. And what you'll find is that the badges option will show up in your Canvas course now. Um, when you click on that, if you don't already have a Badger account, it will actually ask you to authorize that. And because we've got this connected to Canvas, it'll recognize you as a user within our system and automatically log you into that environment. Um, now, once you've got that set up, and we haven't, I haven't finished it yet, but by the end of this week, I'll probably have uh, some more instructional videos to go along with how to actually do this in the same way we did about how to share badges. Uh, once you've got that set up, it'll look something like this when you click on that badges option. 
Um, and there's a number of different things that you can do in your course to, um, you know, start that, that, that badging function. Um, so there's three ways really that you can um, award badges in your course. One of them is you can actually have it set up where you go and claim your badge like we did or like the online ed folks did with their particular course. And um, to answer the earlier question, this is actually, if you don't have a badger account set up, this is probably, or if you don't have the email you got receiving the badge, this is actually the easiest way to go and get it. If you go back and click on this link again, it'll actually take you to your badge. Um, but this is one of the ways in which you can go about awarding your badge. Um, you can actually go into Badger itself and put in the person's or the student's email address and their name. And if you scroll down at the bottom here, you click on OK, and it would actually award them the badge. But that's a little bit more involved. The easiest way for you to do it is once you've set this up in your course, so once you've actually added the badge thing there and enabled Badger, it'll actually tie everything to individual modules. So you can see over here on the left-hand side, sorry, right-hand side, um, we have this complete module option and I can attach badges to completing a particular module. Now, there are a number of different ways that you can set up to complete a module. Um, the first thing is you need to actually set up your module and then click on those three little dots over here on the right hand side by that module name. That will bring up a box that looks like this. And what you need to do is click on the add requirement option. By doing that, it'll allow you to set up what are the requirements that are that students need to complete in order to complete the module. You can have them go through and do everything, or you can have them go through and just do select items. Um, if it's an item like a link or a page or a PDF, uh, a file of some kind, um, basically you can either have them view the item or mark it as done. If it's an assessment, such as a discussion or a quiz or an assignment, you can have it set up so that they just need to submit that item or that they need to score a certain level. And if you remember back to when you completed the online ed ones, they were set up in such a way that you actually had to go through and click on each of the items in that module. And then you had to score at least a certain score on the quiz at the end of the module in order to complete it. Uh, once you've done all of that, you get to award a badge. And, and I know what the first thing you're thinking of is, well, I don't have any fancy graphics to be able to uh, create or to, um, you know, award those badges. Uh, Badger does have a basic system built into it that allows you to create some badges. Um, so you can see you can put graphics and shapes and different colors in there. Um, personally, I like these two resources, uh, Canva and Badge Design. Uh, they allow you a little bit more flexibility. It's similar to this where there are already these predestined shapes or pre-designed shapes that are put in there. You can use different colors. The reason I like those other two better than the one that's in Badger is that um, those two allow you to put text there as well. So you could th put things in there like, you know, module one, module two, module three on each of your badges. So you can distinguish your badges that way. Um, now, I know that's been quick and it's been a bit of a sort of a crash course. And as I mentioned, we'll have videos on how to do each of these individual steps for folks that might be interested in gamifying their courses uh, in about a week or so. But I will pause again right here uh, to see if there's any questions about just how to use badges within Canvas and how you could do that to gamify your course. Um, my guess is that, so I see Carrie has posted a question in the chat um, that asks her about Badger Pro, and it shouldn't ask you about Badger Pro, it should ask you about Badger, so if you're getting a Badger Pro op option, um, it's connecting you to the wrong one. 
Um, so if you email me afterwards, I can set up a session with you and make sure we get the right one. Um, Mary Lou's asking if we can set up core badges in any course. Uh, yes, you can. There are, are certain requirements around that. Um, and I'd be happy to share those with folks uh, following this. Um, but in terms of gamification, um, there is no application or anything like that. There's no sort of formal program if you want to gamify your course. Uh, as an instructor, if you think that's going to help your students and to engage your students more, uh, not only can you do it, but we would uh, encourage you uh, to, to do it. And um, the only sort of requirements are that you don't use Toro branding in the way in which you create your issuer or on your badges uh, when you are just gamifying it. Uh, so we want to reserve the Toro branding for the uh, official badges that we have uh, within the micro credentials at Toro program. Um, let's see, I see one in the, um, in what situation would you want to share? Uh, so Michelle asks, uh, in what situation would you want to share your badge? Um, there are a number of, I guess, ways, reasons why you'd want to or, or times when you would want to. Um, the first is because the, the badge is essentially, it is a, uh, a statement that you have learned something or that you've attended something or participated in something. So in the same way that you would, um, for example, on LinkedIn, um, that you would, you know, list off, say, your degrees or certificate programs or professional development that you might have attended, continuing education that you might have undertaken or completed. Um, badges would be the same kind of thing. So if you, um, as an example, one of the ones, and this gets a little bit to Jim's question in the uh, chat about what badges are currently offered through the TU system for faculty. Uh, one of the badges is for the folks that are part of the library's uh, open education fellows program. Uh, another one is for the, uh, the TUCOM program, that leadership management uh, initiative that uh, the provost office has. Um, you know, those are quite involved programs and, you know, demonstrating that you've completed those programs uh, is something that you might want to share with others. Uh, so Melinda says, how do I access the Toro micro credentialing so I can do a badge? Um, I'm going to have a link for that in a second in terms of the, the official program um, that we've got up on Badger Pro. And um, most of the badges that we have there to date are set up actually for student learners. Uh, we do have some faculty development ones. Uh, the two ones I just mentioned, for example, the OER Fellows Program that the library runs, as well as TUCOM, that leadership management uh, uh, cohorts that go through every year with the Provost Program. Uh, there are some other ones that are currently under development, and, and you'll be able to see a list of those from that link. Uh, coming up in a minute or two. Um, so uh, moving on, specifically looking at our initiative here um, at Toro. So there, as you can see, different types of badges that we have, and there's actually five different levels or tiers of badge that we have. Uh, so the first one is a um, we call it tier zero. So this is more of the internal uh, faculty and staff development one. So these are things that are only available to folks who are part of the uh, Toro system already, and not just part, but faculty and staff. So not, not for students. Uh, one of the things is that there isn't a standardized design for these. They look a little bit different than all of the other ones. Um, here's five generic versions that we've come up with, uh, but you'll see that some of the other ones, like the TUCOM one is a good example, uh, created their own design. Um, at some point in the next year, we will be bringing the Office of Online Ed ones into the formal program. And as you know, they've got a little bit of a different one. Um, so these ones are ones that are only available internally. Uh, in many cases, they are experiential in nature or that they are based around an experience that you would have to complete. Um, the second tier uh, are tier one badges. These are experiential badges. The easiest way to think about these are they are similar to the ones that um, similar to continuing education or continuing medical education uh, units. Um, so, but for folks that they're not used 
full four. So if you think about the New York Medical College has those uh, COVID seminars that many of us have attended over the past two years uh, that they give CMUs for. Well, I'm an education faculty member, and even if I uh, left the higher ed, I'd still just be a teacher, and medical education units aren't all that useful to me. Uh, but having badges for those types of things might be more useful to me if that was a particular type of learning that I wanted uh, to um, illustrate to folks. So uh, the experiential badges are our lowest level ones. Typically speaking, you have to just show up, um, confirm attendance. So in many cases, the assessment that's associated with these badges are just it's set up to basically ensure that you actually paid attention to a thing or you were actually actually there. Um, in most cases, they tend to be very low level. Um, the next level up are skills badges. Uh, so these are ones where uh, we've got them tied specifically to uh, one or more of the skills that are listed in the EMSI database. Uh, there are about 30,000 uh, discrete skills that are listed in that database, um, and it's an internationally uh, accepted database. Actually, it's one of three that are sort of used by business and industry. And um, the assessment in these ones, so they tend to be short in duration, focused around one or more specific skills. The assessments for them are focused upon the demonstration of the ability to do that skill, not the ability to uh, demonstrate the knowledge required for that skill. Um, and so the distinction is kind of like, it's the difference between your when you went and got your driver's license, the actual driving test where you demonstrated you could drive, as opposed to the written exam where you demonstrated the knowledge about how to drive uh, safely in society. Um, so the skills badges should focus upon the driving test kind of aspect to them, at least from an assessment standpoint. Our tier three are our non-credit badges. Um, so these are more course-like in nature, but in many cases are still shorter than what we would have for a Carnegie unit. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar, Carnegie unit is based around sort of 15 hours of instruction is, is one Carnegie unit. So if you think about your course as a three unit course, that represents 45 hours of instruction over a semester period, uh, which for most of us, uh, our semesters run 14 to 16 weeks. Um, so in many cases, the non-credit ones are much more involved than a single skill or two, but not rising to the level of either from a content perspective or from an assessment perspective where they would be considered a Carnegie four credit unit. Now. One of the differences in the non-credit badges compared to the previous three levels is the fact that you can stack multiple non-credit badges to create a micro-credential. Uh, so we've got non-credit micro-credentials that would be comprised of two or more uh, non-credit badges. And a non-credit micro-credential should uh, include a minimum of 20 hours of learning uh, on the part of the student. Since we have a non-credit version, we also have a credit-based version. And the credit-based versions are ones that are tied to existing coursework or tied to new coursework. So in addition to getting the badges that are associated with these learning experiences, the student is also eligible for undergraduate or graduate credit. And if those credits happen to be part of an existing uh, certificate or degree program, they would be able to use those courses as part of that degree program. Um, so these are often good ways to take a course that you have that might be something that's new within your program uh, that say someone who took the degree five years ago might not have got uh, to take learning on that particular topic or that particular issue. But as professionals in the field right now, it may be useful for them to come back as a continuing ed kind of a situation and to get that learning. Uh, we can turn that into a credit-based badge for that kind of student who might already have your degree. Or you can also sequence these um, in much the same way we do with our non-credits uh, to form a micro-credential. 
And in those instances, they can be set up in such a way that it might be a good introduction to your particular field. So as a way to get people maybe interested interested in your discipline without having to commit to the full master's degree. Um, so taking, say, two or three of the courses as part of that program and turning them into a micro-credential as a recruitment tool to try to get folks into your program interested in the topic and then maybe stick around for the full master's. And even if they don't, uh, they'll still leave with a micro-credential as well as um, you'll still have sort of, you know, the, the, the revenue that came from having a credit-bearing student uh, in the course that wasn't a part of your program. Um, if you want to take a part in the formal program, there is actually a proposal that you have to fill out. It's, it's a 22 question um, proposal that uh, in many cases, as you can see from the initial six questions, um, they can often be answered by a couple of questions or sorry, a couple of uh, statements as opposed to anything that's that detailed. Um, the way in which the process actually works is uh, you should work with your department chair, your dean to come up with the idea first, um, because they may have your individual unit might have some sort of internal process for approving new initiatives or new programs, and your individual dean or department chair would be aware of that. Um, once you get the go ahead from them, you would complete the application form that gets sent to me as the coordinator. I'll work with you to pick up any sort of things that I notice that uh, might be problematic along the way. And once the application is ready, it would get sent to um, the Academic Affairs Committee, which is basically the provosts uh, from each of the, the campuses uh, sit on the end. They are the ones that would approve it. Uh, depending on what type of program you've um, asked for, if it's a tier zero through two, uh, once it's approved, we can usually get it ready to go within a matter of a week or so. Uh, if it's a non-credit or a credit bearing one, uh, depending upon if it needs to be brought into Banner and if we are going to be using our institutional canvas, um, that could take upwards of six to eight weeks to actually get ready to go. So for those of you that might be thinking about the non-credit or credit bearing options, you should probably plan those out about, well, at least two months, I would say probably a semester ahead of when you want to start them. Um, all of this information will be available in the next month or two in Toro One. So when you're in Toro One, if you're up in the top right hand side of Toro One, you'll see there's a My Sites area. And if you click on the little triangle down, it'll list off all of the ones that you are a part of. Uh, within the next month or two, you will see one there called Micro Credentials at Toro that will be available to all faculty and staff in the system. And that will include links to all of the videos about how to do this, links to the application form. Um, for that matter, we'll probably have, it'll be one of the many places that we post the recording for this event. Uh, at some point, although it's not there yet, as you can see, uh, there will be a toro.edu forward slash micro credentials website or part of the Toro website uh, that will be there. Um, that's probably a little bit further off. Um, my guess is it'll probably be around um, fall of next year when that gets launched. Uh, but that will be a place where we can promote all of these opportunities that we have available for potential students. Um, in the meantime, uh, you can visit our current uh, Badger Pro area, which lists off all of the badges that we currently have available. And I've just dropped that link into the chat for you to be able to visit. Uh, so that's the public side of our site. Uh, you can see right now we've got 48 different badges that are there from uh, six different issuers. And uh, it'll give you a sense of sort of the different flavors that are there. Um, Finally, that's my email and my, um, as well as the micro credential email that you have. And uh, that will give you the opportunity to, um, I can send you any of these links before they actually become available. So I can send you the application form if that's something that you're interested in as well. Um, and finally, um, I will be having open sessions. 
uh, two Fridays a month. Uh, I've tried to time them for both folks. So uh, the first Friday of every month from now until basically the end of the spring semester. So now until April um, at 1230 Eastern, uh, I'll just be sitting in a Zoom room. Uh, I've created a tiny URL for you so that you don't have to remember what the the actual item was, but if, and I've just dropped those two links in the chat. Uh, so don't click on them now because it'll take you from this room to that room. Um, so just copy and paste them into something else. Uh, but at 12.30 uh, Eastern, uh, the first Friday of every month, I'll be just sitting in a Zoom room uh, available for uh, you to bounce ideas around or to walk you through anything. Uh, the third Friday of every month uh, at noon Pacific, I will also be sitting in a Zoom room uh, waiting for folks that might be interested in taking advantage of any of these. Um, and I believe that brings us to the very end of what uh, I wanted to talk about and uh, entertain any last questions. Um, I see one in the chat about uh, creating intrinsic as well as extrinsic value for the badges in the courses. Um, in terms of the intrinsic aspect of it, I, I think the fact that if you create it in such a way, if you use the badges in your course in such a way where it creates an environment where either I'm competing against others or I'm competing against myself. Um, and if you think about just the ask, you know, the term gamification, that's sort of the idea behind it, that if I can create an environment where there's something to win, either um, because I'm beating other people or because I've accomplished something on my own that allows me to, to, to win. Um, you know, if you think about a, a race as, as a, a, a good example, you know, there are some people that, you know, are looking to finish first and get a medal. There are other people that are looking just to finish the race. You know, I, I, I'm a big overweight guy. So me, I'm just looking to finish the race. And, you know, I, I'm quite, you know, that's sort of the, the intrinsic motivation of, of finishing up. So having, you know, badges along the way that then accumulate into a badge by com for completing everything, you know, that would be sort of the finishing the race equivalent. So I don't see any other questions in the Q&A or in the chat right now. Um, so I'm just gonna drop those two email addresses into the chat so folks can uh, copy and paste them. Um, I will stop sharing and um, wait a sec to see if anything else pops up. But if not, I, will, I know that uh, Rima and Jim have some upcoming events that they would like to tell you about. Uh, as we finish off today, and I'll just keep watching to see if anything else pops up. Uh, thank you, Michael. That was uh, a great snapshot of everything that you're doing here for us at uh, Toro Universe at the Toro University System. So, on behalf of all the provosts and on behalf of Jim, I really thank you for providing this. Um, I mean, being the wealth of knowledge when it comes to micro-credentialing. So thank you so much. Uh, from the questions that came up, looks like there's a lot of interest and uh, I'm sure you will receive a, a ton of emails soon. So, um, so thank you. Um, the next, there is a very large uh, faculty development workshop slash keynote that is taking place uh, in, on the last Friday of October which is uh, October 28th, uh, Flower Derby, who is an expert in the field of teaching and learning, will be at Toro, uh, at, the, at all of Toro University system. You can be on any campus as a faculty member to attend. All full-time, part-time and adjunct faculty are welcome. Flower Derby will be giving a keynote and then there will be an interactive workshop. Um, please email Jim or I, and I'm going to put it again. Um, there will be a, a web link going out very soon for registration. But in the meantime, if you're interested to register, please email one of us and we will send you um, the web link, the, the registration link when it's out. Uh, Jim, any other announcements that are very timely? 
So what time will Flower be presenting? Yes, she is the she's going to be with us from 10:45 a.m. to 1:30 p.m. EST time. Unfortunately, um, we have to do these biannual faculty development workshops on a Friday. And this has been the sweet spot time. It will be early for the West, uh, the Western Division, but we try to start as late as possible for the for e, uh, for the Eastern Standard Time, so that we can tie this up before Shabbos. So, ten forty-five a.m. to one thirty p.m. So just a reminder about all the wonderful upcoming holidays we have so we can take time off at the end of September and throughout the beginning of October. Uh, the one thing going on on our campus is uh, the tentative date for the opening of the new Immersive Technology Learning Center, which is use of virtual and augmented reality is November 7th. And then on October 31st, there will be a campus-wide play date for faculty, staff, and students to learn how to use our immersive technology equipment. Yep. And thank everybody for being here. Thank you, everyone. Um, I think that's, that's about it for today. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns uh, about faculty development in the system, please email Jim or I. We are happy to help. We work as a team. So uh, if there's something that's relevant to a specific campus, we will direct it accordingly. Um, thank you again to Mike and thank you for our participants today. Have a wonderful day.